Uh, um, obviously, the, say, the, the new album, uh, title-wise, um, an obvious one, but uh, what is in the title? Well, it really refers to, uh, the title, of course, is ne Neapolis, which is, you know, refers to the, the process the record was made, which was really quite, it was kind of made on the road last year um, in, in Scotland, where we got the fundamentals uh, kind of taken care of in Dublin, Amsterdam. Right. Uh, Paris, Germany, and finally we ended up mixing and putting the, the, the sort of finest, you know, touches in the south of Italy, near Naples. Okay. And I suppose um, some albums, there's a phrase appears and you say, this is definitely it, you know, it sums it all up, and uh, didn't quite really happen on this, this, this record. So it was more saying, you know, this is Naples, it's where we did the artwork, it's where, where we finished it off, this is Simple Minds. Um, in the here and now. Mm, mm, mm. And so um, up to Annapolis, did, did Simple Minds have to sort of reinvent itself in order to sort of keep pace with, uh, with the changes? I mean, it being now nearly, well, is, uh, you're in your 20th year. Yeah, I think we had to. We had to. We we, we certainly had to uh, change from uh, our last album. And as much that um, the last album, we enjoyed the whole thing. But it was pretty much a rock album, you know, made in America. It's got that kind of big, big production. And uh, as much as we were happy with some of the songs on there, like especially "She's Out of Her Hypnotize" or something, sure. we felt that um, as an artistic avenue it would have been a cul-de-sac you know to go down further we felt it was was complete which meant that uh, for our own uh, entertainment we had to look at the you know the variables uh, the sound again and come up with an angle that would um, well, intrigue us and and because we you know if, if we're not getting turned on the chances are that neither will you so uh so I think more from that that point of view than than uh, and, and indeed, if you do have a career as you allude to that lasts for more than five minutes, sure, sure. You, you 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 know you got to uh, you always have to come up with uh, a new perspective mm -hmm. because it was interesting as well. I mean, obviously going going back to Peter Walsh and. Uh, you know, was was that sort of a, a conscious thing that you decided to do in order to sort of pull back and maybe, um, you know, just have a look at, you know, where you had come and where, you know, the high points had been and sort of mm. take it from there? It's funny, I mean, uh, on paper, as you say, that we have the involvement of Peter Walsh again, who produced New Gold Dream, and um, even some of the musicians we used, Derek Forbes was one of the original members of the band and hadn't played with us for quite some time. Uh, Mel Gaynor's playing again. And when you put all this together, and, and indeed, even some of the sounds on the record, it, it could seem that there was a conscious uh, attempt to go back, but um, how can I, I describe it really? I, I guess we, we don't really believe it. It's possible to go back as such. I mean, of course, those were different times. Sure. The world was different. We were different. Technology was was different. Um, and the great thing about those, you know, records in the past is that they're still there. They mm -hmm. they still exist. So to try and um, to try and re recreate would have been a non, you know, sequitur. But uh, within within our music, we're always amazed at how certain sort of cycles come come round and and. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's more a circle coming round or, you know, a circle going back as opposed to a, a conscious sort of trip down memory lane. Yeah. I mean, another example of that could be the fact that when we played in the summer last year, we did songs like I Travel and 30 mm -hmm. Frames a Second and mm -hmm. stuff that we hadn't played for 10 or 12 years because over the last 10 or 12 years, we thought those songs don't mean anything to us anymore. We don't, you know, relate to them. We're not that that kind of band etc and then suddenly the track or the song takes on a new life and does have a currency does have a value and why that is I don't know but again I can only say it's somewhat like a circle seems to turn mm -hmm. which in which in the in the case of uh, of simple minds is very much the case because I mean you've you know I mean in the past 20 years you've you've had ups you've had downs I mean at one point you know when uh, when you left Virgin um, I was sort of thinking to myself, okay, well, at this point, Jim Kerr is going to say, well, you know, let's pack it in, which you which you haven't done, which is great. 
No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. You don't get rid of us that that easy. I mean, all of that is. Uh, uh, I th- I think we had to make. I mean, it's all it's always been a, been enjoyable. I'm not going to say that at certain times it hasn't been more stressful than um, others. But the great thing about you know music or the great thing about having an artist, whatever particular outside thing is going on that say is creating this stress, you disappear into the music. Mm-hmm. And you know, sure, you maybe spend one day dealing with whatever it is that's not so pleasant, but. Charlie and I then are in the heart of the music, and it's um, it's a different planet. Mm-hmm. And um, so, no, I mean, we with Simple Minds, I mean, if you look at anyone, again, anyone that's had a long career, it, it, it's not a ladder, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's more a graph. Yeah. You know, you do some things that are inspired, you do something maybe truly brilliant, you do, do something else that doesn't work, you do something that's just, bloody awful um, I think to make art you, you, you have to be uh, be prepared to get it wrong and what, what we have found that often in the getting it wrong mm. is where the real good stuff is about to emerge yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, um, and um, I think perhaps we're more frank about that than most mm. and, and, and I mean the beauty of it is I mean as I said listening to you is you, you you're definitely not pessimistic about any part of it, which, by rights, you know, um, you would be, you know, having having seen so much, and, um, you know, um, as simple minds over the last 20 years. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we're blessed to be able to, uh, not, you know, do this, to have this, to take take part in this, and um, and uh, I think with with the experience comes. I mean, we. As we, from where we are just now, in a funny, we were both much more, you know, relaxed than we've ever been, and at the same time, energized as a result of being being relaxed. It's a funny combination. When I say relaxed, it's like um, at times you you can think it's you know the most important thing in the world and all that stuff. And I'm not going to deny how important it is to us that the the music works and comes across and stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, the great great thing about, about music is no one's going to die if it doesn't, you know, it's it's not brain surgery or any of that stuff, thankfully, and, 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 and I think, um, I think having that perspective is, is uh, in general, we feel very free and, and um, very close to the music again. Mm-hmm. Because at, at, at one point, um, I think especially when Don't You Forget About Me um, obviously did so well and, and all of a sudden you became this... You know, this huge band, um, you know, all over the world that um, you seem to be sort of uncomfortable with, you know, with the success, you know, and all the attention and focus. Whereas now it's almost um, you, you have that success, but it's a, it's coupled with a kind of respect, which you seem to, you know, um, be more comfortable with. Would that sort of be a good way of looking at it? Absolutely right. That's, I mean, that's a perfect, perfect world, you know. Uh, no one owes us anything. We don't owe anyone anything. Uh, we perhaps owe it to ourselves to, to you know, never let uh, anyone who buys one of our records or goes to our gigs never let let them down. Again, sometimes it's not really possible, but you know, we've had, we've had. Um, it's been a great, great balance where anywhere we've gone in the world, people will will turn up and relate to our songs. Our songs mean something to them. Um, we've, we have the satisfaction of that still. And at the same time, we have uh, a popularity that still lets us do what we want. And, and um, you, you know, it, it's not as overburdening. Uh, you know, I mean, even, even the last, you know, record by... Uh, by sort of our own normal standards, it, I guess it was a, a commercial failure, but it just less than three million copies worldwide. It's not too bad. Thank, Thank you very you much. much. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. well, being a Scotsman, that's very important. <laughs> Absolutely. And the and the new album, you've uh, you've done what you typically do, where you've sort of embraced uh, you know all the new technologies and the trappings that have come along, but uh, um, and and it's it's uh, again it's worked very well. Was that sort of intentional, or was it merely the way that the the album developed? Well, when as I said, we it was more a thing of we knew what we didn't want as opposed to knowing what we we wanted, and and uh, you know it backs up this 
the truth that we're, we are still making this thing up as we go mm. along. And uh, But we knew that we didn't want to do a, another rock record as such. And, yeah. and I mean, uh, and describing it, it's over simplistic but it's a bit like when we when we when we took away say the rock trademarks the crashing drums and therefore the big big guitar chords that would have influenced perhaps some of the melodies and the ways i, I would have sang and, and the space in the music let us hear some of the electronics that had played such a huge part of simple minds early on and then although we're still there was somewhat reduced to a more sort of a percussive uh, level and and when the space in the music was there the electronics kind of became interesting again to us or became the thing again and and uh, you know so uh, and at the same time I'm actually every week we keep getting requests now from you know all these other you know, culture of mixers and samplers to use our stuff and sometimes it takes the outside outsiders to remind you mm -hmm. of what you have mm -hmm. and um, so uh, again as, as I say it was more knowing what we didn't want as opposed to what we we wanted but th there was a fine balance with the we, we wanted to use the electronics but we didn't want to get into this thing of a lot of bands of our generation have been doing of letting the remixers run wild or yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you know getting in some hip the next year, the set of the music, yeah. Yeah, which, which you know, I, I, with grace, you know, respect, I don't think Simple Minds need that. No, absolutely. We, we've no. always had that. Mm, 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 mm. But um, also interesting was that, um, to say, and, and, and I, I, may, I may be wrong, but you, but you have spent time in South Africa, or you did um, spend time in South Africa, I think, just prior to all the changes, obviously, that have happened here. Um, but you, you, you've you've never played in South Africa. Is is that something that you would? Still no, want no, to do? we did. We we played. We have now been there. We played. Uh, would have been three years ago. We 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 finally got to South South Africa and uh, enjoyed it immensely. It was a very brief trip, but certainly that was in Cape Town. Then was it? We played uh, Johannesburg, Cape Town, and Durban. You did. That's right. Oh, I must have. As I said, because I can remember, um, as I said, there was a there was a point when um, you know that uh, that you'd said that you had wanted to come, which is oh yeah, which is good. Yeah, yeah. Because South Africa is a is a country that even. Uh, my, um, in fact, it was one of the first first countries that I, I guess I was I was aware of outside of my own country because my my grandfather had been there and and come back absolutely mm. you know full of South South Africa, especially Cape Town and and um, he, he wasn't a very articulate man but he, he managed to convey how magic the Cape Town was and and uh, you know Table Mountain and and all this and and. Uh, when I finally got there, uh, after having travelled most of the world and, and seen, you know, mm. we're probably on the verge of being being blase, uh, being blase. I I wasn't let down, mm, mm, mm. and we we instantly made the friendships there, and uh, uh, it was so great because it was at the end of a world tour when you're when you're kind of really had it mm. and nothing. <laughs> it's pleasing and yet we came back after spending probably a week in South Africa we came away really refreshed mm -mm -mm. because um, as I say I'm sure um, Simple Minds to some degree helped South Africa um, in its sort of transformation even in a, in a tiny way with uh, you know with the likes of Mandela Day and, and the tracks that you did because I think even for me at the time I remember um, buying the single um and uh, and it, it, I think it made a lot of people think about uh, you know about it, but from a different perspective. I mean, a, a lot of music had been written about about South Africa and its history, but I think you um, sort of hit the nail on the head in a lot of respects, and you hit an audience that traditionally wouldn't have probably been aware of a lot of the things that were actually happening. Well, if if that is the case, that would be be great. But um, I I think. Uh you know, it, uh, this, the, the values in the music were, were the values that that uh, we we held, and, and um, I would never just make a point of of sing, you know singling out South Africa. I mean, the, yeah, the, you never did. Uh, yeah, it it it. it um, of course, we we were so against the apartheid, 
you know, mm. stayed. But, you know, as I was very keen to say, South, South Africa didn't have the franchise on that racism. It's in my own country. It, yeah. it goes on. It's, it's you know, that kind of ignorance or what, whatever. But, um, yeah, it was... Uh, but it was it was so great to get there and, and, and play because for the during the, the years um, we always got quite a lot of mail and and you know, people you know understanding why we couldn't come but uh, um, still you know supporting the band and uh, so uh, it was it was so great to finally get there and, and see South South Africa dealing. Uh, or the people of South Africa having the opportunity to deal with things in their own terms. I mean, uh, it was never that we felt we had uh, the answers at all. It's with the music, sometimes you get a chance to pose some questions. And yeah, and you have a voice, which yeah. a lot of South Africans didn't have. In yes, own. exactly. Sure. But now, it's to say, um, I've got two, well, I've got, a, I've got a request and one last question, because I know your time is at a premium. Um, you referenced Lou Reed as an icon. Now, Lou Reed is, a, uh, is sort of a, a fan of mine, um, or well, I'm a fan of his, rather, not a fan of mine. Um, <laughs> and um, wh what actually makes, uh, makes him so in your mind? Well, I... I uh, I think it was the, the first of all starting with the Velvet Underground. I mean, the the music was just uh, the music really captivated me. I'd never quite heard such uh, um, you could say urban mm. rock and roll, avant garde, uh, um, sexy, dark music. Mm. Um, and then on top of that. What I loved about the Velvet Underground, and especially Lou Reed, that they proved kind of what became the essence of punk, mm -hmm. that if you could master three chords and had some imagination, that you could write, you know, anyone could write a song, and and, um, and even with the greatest respect to the way Lou Reed sings, anyone can even sing that way, yeah, you know, you don't have to be classically trained or pay a fortune on guitar lessons yeah. or piano lessons. It's kind of yeah, kind three of chords and a bit of uh, attitude. attitude. <laughs> and and um, of course, you, you uh, the fact that Lurid has such incredible imagination uh, yeah. always helps. But yeah. I guess it's for those things mostly that uh, I love him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as I say, um, um, could I ask you one, one last favor if I may, Jim? Sure. Um, could you do an ID for me? No problem. Um, it's basically, I'm going to be including this on a show that goes out um, on college radio. It'll hit about 360 South Africans, so that's 360,000. So it's, it's Brilliant. Yeah, so the name of the show is The Cutting Edge. Um, the Cutting Edge. So you could, uh, you know, basically just go, hi, this is Jim Kerr from The Simple Minds, and you're listening to The Cutting Edge? Yep. Okay. Whenever you're ready. All right. Hi there, this is Jim Kerr from Simple Minds, and you're listening to The Cutting Edge. Thank you very much, sir. Pleasure. As I say, congratulations again. I wish I had more time to speak to you because it would be pure self-indulgence on my part. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure, I, I'm sure I, would have, I would have enjoyed it. Yeah, but um, as I say, congratulations. I hope, I hope we do see you again, um, you know, should you be touring. Yes. Because uh, I think you'll uh, <clears throat> go down a hoot as you did, I'm sure, the last time you were here. Yeah. But All thank, right. thank you again for your time. I wish you the best, Jason. Thank you. Bye. Bye now.